Hello and welcome to part 3 of my Lemmagate slash Expression Rants 2 tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on client side code and I'm going to be doing things somewhat live, uh, try a different format than last time. Maybe this one's easier to understand. Now we'll begin by writing out the word client. The reason going to be doing this is of course we're running it client side. Now, if we're going to be drawing on a screen, for example, we're going to be using something that's called an event. Now, before we go straight into writing uh, screen events, I'll have to talk you through how an event works first. The way an event works is in the background, there's things that are always going on. You know, people might be writing text, you might be pressing buttons, whatever. Whenever anything like that happens, they trigger what's known as an event. Now, you can hook straight into that using this chip. For example, that. Now, although it might look a little complicated, it really isn't. I'll let's break it down line by line and see what's going on. Here we've said we're going to use the event player chat. Now, you might be wondering, you know, where'd I find the word player chat from? If we click the user manual, we can bring up the uh, examples, the syntaxes, and all that. But if you go to your browser, get rid of anything in your search bar, press enter, and use your looks something like this. If you click these, they minimize everything. So if you, as you can see, you can see all the methods, functions, and all that. If we go to events, scroll down, oh, sort it, sorry, sort it by availability, and we can see all the kinds of events that happen here. Now, we're going to be using the player chat event, so we'll look for that. As you can see, it says shared. What this means is the server and the client can both use this exact event. The next part says it's going to return a string. We're not going to worry about that just for now. All we're really focused on is the actual event itself. Player chat, player, string, boolean. What this means is it will have three variables. A player variable, a string variable, and a boolean variable. Now, it doesn't actually tell us what they are, but I can tell you from experience it means the player that actually said something, what they said, and whether or not it was in team chat. Now we know this, we can close this. As you can see here, I've already written my variables. These, as you know, can be anything. You could you could name these whatever you liked. So, you know. That would still work completely fine. But just for ease of use, so we know what our variables mean, it's usually very good to name your variables something useful, something that reflects what it actually holds. Now, our first variable, as we know, holds a player information. Remember before we had an integer, we could have a string, table, and a bool. Well, there's also many other kinds of variables. In this case, we're going to be using a player variable. Now all that means is it holds information about a player. Just like an integer would hold mathematical information or string might hold text information, player variables hold player information. So for our first variable we're going to call it PLY because that's short for player. It's easy to write it over and over and over again if you need to, instead of writing the whole name player or anything bigger. The second variable we have is going to be holding the actual text of what they said, the actual message. So MSG is an easy shorthand way of saying message or string. Remember, of course, this could actually be anything. We're just doing this because it's easy. Now, the last one is whether or not it was said in team chat. Generally not really needed, but might as well have it there. Team. Now, how do we know that actually works? Like, what's a good way to represent how all of our variables work and what they actually hold? Well, just like the last tool, we can use the print function as a nice way to debug our code. If we just use the player variable, as in the player that last said something. We won't just get the player's name. 
because it's a player variable, it's technically an entity. And we'll, well, as you'll see, you'll get more information than you realize. As you can see here, we have player, player one, and my name. It's not very clean because we're basically just printing out an entity. We're not actually filtering it at all. What this means is player as in the type. So of course, as we saw in our variables, it was a player type. Player one, because if there's more than one player on a server, every single player will have their own index. As I'm the only person on the server, I am index one. And of course, the name of the player that said something. If we go back into our code, if you want to actually print out something a bit more clean, like let's say the name of the player, we could do dot name. This will print out just the name of the player. Now, the reason I know you can use name to get the name of the player is because for the most part, players can also be treated as an entity. If we go to the user manual and go to entities, we can scroll down and we can see everything you can do with an entity. If we go to methods, sort by name and scroll down, we can see entity.name and it's shared so the client can access this and so can the server. If, for example, we want to get the position of the player, we can also scroll down to pos and as you can see, it's shared. So again, both people can use it. But if you want to do something that can actually affect the prop, for example, setting its position or setting its color, then you're going to have to actually ask the server to do that for you. As you can see here, set color, for example, is server side. So that means my client can't set the color of a prop. But for now, we're only going to use the name method. If I click validate, click X and paste down my chip. It now prints out a nice clean version of my name instead of having all the in other information like the index and the type, etc. If we go back into the little guy, the manual, and go back to entity.name, this second column here tells us what this method returns. Now, what that means is where we see entity.name and it prints out my name, it's actually returning a string. If, for example, we we're going to use the position of an entity, that will return a vector. If we scroll down here, you can see it says vector. Now, because it's a string, we don't need to convert it. And to be honest, because we're just printing it, we're using the print function, the print function automatically will convert everything to a string. So, for example, if we wanted to print out the position, it actually shows us the type, which is a vector, all the brackets and all the commas because it's just simply converting it to a string. For this instance though, again, we're just going to use name. Now, because it's a string, we can use plus to put two strings together. And I'm going to use a colon and a space just to make it nice and clean when I print it. Now we're going to use our second variable. Again, it's a string, so I can easily just plop it straight in there. And it's called message. And you're probably already aware of what this is going to do. This is just going to show us the message we said and the player that said it. It'd help I pasted the chip down first. There we go. It printed out my name, colon, space and what I said. Again, my name, colon and a space and what was said. Now let's say you want to make a bit of code that only activates when you say something. That's pretty easy to do. We'd use the same event, same variables. All we will do is add a few if statements. We haven't really gone through if statements yet, but I'm going to assume most people at least understand what they are and how they work. 
we're going to be explaining them here anyway, so it doesn't particularly matter. Now, an if statement is simply a set of questions the code will ask itself. In this instance, if the string message equals equals, and the reason we use two equals is that um, that's the equivalent of asking the question, does this equal something else? If it equals equals the string of exclamation mark chip. The reason we use two equal signs is one equal sign means you're setting a value. Two equal signs means you're going to be asking a question, asking, does this variable equals equals this variable? Now, in this case, we're not using a second variable, we'll be using a string, but the same rules apply. So, does our message equals the words chip? Exclamation mark chip. Don't know. If it does, do what's between these two curly braces. Else, if it doesn't equal that, do it between these curly braces. So you'll see it. Ha so you'll see how it works now. My code works. Okay. So, I wrote the word exclamation mark chip, and I got this phrase. I wrote this phrase and got this. The reason being is because message did equal chip, so it wrote my code works. And of course, if I write, if, if I write anything else, do this. Now, the problem with this is that anybody on the server could write the word chip. We want it, so if only we say something, then run code. Because I'm not on the server, I can't show you what would happen if somebody else writes it, but you'll get the idea. So we've asked if exclamation mark chip is what was last said. Great. Now we need to ask who also said it. do that, we'd use this. Now, just like most other things, we'd say and, and. That basically just means and. If this and that, then carry on. PLY is our first variable, and as we know, it's a player variable. Now, if this was a string, this bit of code would not work. But because it's a player, it will. We've asked it, does it equal, equals, equals, the owner? Owner means, is this the owner of the chip? If we go to our user manual and go to browser and type in the function we want, we can see that it's shared. Again, we're allowed to use it and it returns a player. Now, because it returns a player, we're allowed to directly compare it to this variable because it's a player. Now, if the string that was last said and the player that said it equals the owner of this chip, then do this bit of code. Right, if we paste down our code, and if we write the words chip, which as you can see here, I didn't, so I had to take out a few minutes to figure out what was going on. I completely forgot that's what we were doing my code works because we are the owner and we are uh, and we wrote exclamation mark chip before we end this let's use one more kind of event now we're going to be using a server side event so we have to write server And player spray returns just the player. Not not the position, nothing else, just a player. Okay. So we could write So whenever any player uses this spray, we'll be notified.
Now, I don't know why you can't see my spray, but as you can see, it came up there. Now, we forgot to put the space in, so we can quickly add that. And whenever I spray, it tells me. Thank you for watching part three. Uh, part four, we're going to be using actual screens to draw some simple text, simple boxes, and see what we can do with that. But until then, goodbye.